Okay, so let's see if you can figure out how to solve this interesting math word problem about age. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Tom is five years younger than Lisa. In six years, Tom will be three-fourths as old as Lisa. How old is Tom now? All right, now we do have a multiple choice question here, and all of these numbers are in years. So A is 12, B is 8, C is 9, and D is 10. Now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this problem. So we're talking about two time frames. We have right now, we have six years from now, and we have two people, Tom and Lisa. One is older, one is younger. So Tom is five years younger than Lisa. In six years, Tom will be three-fourths as old as Lisa. And the question is what? How old is Tom right now? All right, let's take a look at the right answer. Tom is nine years old right now. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for your ability to solve a math word problem about age. Now, this problem could be uh, not too difficult uh, the way it's set up right now. Okay, so the correct answer is nine. So you could uh, use these answers to figure out the correct uh, solution, right? Because uh, one of these is the correct answer. So if you solve the problem that way, that is fantastic. So if you say, all right, well, Tom is nine years old right now, okay, or Tom is five years younger than Lisa, that means what? Well, then uh, nine plus five, which is 14, well, that's how old Lisa is right now. And you kind of re, uh, reverse engineer the solution just by uh, trial and error. So if you approach the problem uh, that way, that is fantastic. But if we didn't have a multiple choice question here, well, we're simply going to have to know the math, the math excuse me, to solve the problem. And really what we're talking about here is an algebra word problem. Now, I didn't want to say solve the algebra word problem because a lot of people don't like algebra word problems. They're intimidated by them. And uh, actually, some of you may have uh, solved the problem in your own kind of special way. So that is fantastic as well. But uh, here I'm going to be using algebra because if you're uh, studying algebra, you're guaranteed to see this type of problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So here is the problem. Now, I've already read the, uh, the actual question a few times, but as a rule of thumb, always read a uh, math word problem at least three times. All right, so here's our problem. Again, uh, we have all this information, and we need to start thinking about how we're going to organize the information, but it's important to note what is the question. All right, so we have right now, we have six years from now, we have Tom and Lisa, Tom and Lisa, and uh, one is older and one is younger, right? So Tom is five years younger, so Tom is younger, and the question is asking how old is Tom right now? Okay, so this type of problem, it's uh, best to kind of organize it, this information. Well, I would say the best, but a great way of doing this is to set up a table. Now, for those of you that will be studying algebra or um, have studied algebra, you'll see that tables are widely used because they're an excellent way to organize all the information. Now, what we need to do here as well is establish a variable for someone's age. So I'm gonna let the variable x, so x is just gonna represent a number, and I'm gonna let x equals, uh, uh, represent e Lisa's age, excuse me, Lisa's age right now. Now you could let x uh, represent Tom's age right now, or x uh, equals uh, Tom Tom's age in the future, or Lisa's age in the future. So you could still get the problem right, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a choice and let x equal Lisa's age right now. All right, so when we do that, here is going to be this setup. So let's let x equal uh, Lisa's age right now. 
So we have two people, Lisa and Tom, and we have two time frames, the age right now and their age six years from now. All right, so how old is Lisa right now? Well, we're gonna let X equal uh, Lisa's age right now, so that will be X. So Lisa is X years old currently. Now in six years, she's gonna be what? Well, she's gonna be X plus six. We're just simply gonna add six to her current age, which is X. And Tom is what? Well, Tom, we have to go back to the problem. Tom is five years younger than Lisa currently, okay? So if Lisa is 20, okay, Tom is gonna be five years younger, which of course will be 15. So whatever Lisa's age is, Tom is gonna be X minus five, and that is his current age. All right, so Tom's age right now is X minus five, and uh, in six years, Tom will be what? Well, he'll be, uh, six years older than his current age, so six years more than X minus five. All right, so now we have their ages, uh, at least we have a model of their ages, Lisa and Tom's ages right now, and in uh, six years from now. But that's not enough to solve this problem. So we have a variable, so we need to come up with an equation. So what do we need to do? Well, we have to read this part of the problem. In six years, Tom will be three-fourths as old as Lisa. So this is a relationship that we can use to set up an equation. So in six years, Tom will be three-fourths as old as Lisa. Okay, so how old are they going to be in six years? Well, we have a lovely table here that tells us their age in six years. So in six years, Lisa is going to be X plus six. And in six years, Tom is going to be X minus five plus six. All right, so let's go ahead and carefully think about this. So in six years from now, uh, Tom is going to be three-fourths as old as Lisa. All right, so in six years, Tom is going to be what? X minus five plus six. So uh, recall, that's uh, Tom's age in six years right there. And in six years, Lisa is going to be what? X plus six. But Tom is going to be three-fourths of Lisa's age in six years. So we have to take that three-fourths times Lisa's age, which of course will be X plus six. And now we have a lovely equation that we can solve for X. All right, now when we solve this uh, equation for X, that's not the final answer. So we'll you know, have to be very careful on uh, the result of solving this equation on what to do next. But uh, the next thing to do here is to see if you can solve this basic algebra linear equation. All right, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow my channel. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I love posting videos. I pretty much post a one to two, uh, sometimes three videos per day, and I've been doing this for years. So I'm definitely committed to putting as much uh, you know, great math content, at least as, you know, as best as I can make. You know, and the, really what I try to focus on is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Take one problem and really break it down in such a manner that pretty much anyone can understand what's going on. So that's why I like to take my time and really walk through things step by step. But my YouTube videos are you know, basically kind of like tutorial videos, explanations of problems. They're not really kind of formal math instruction. So if you really want to learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. But I definitely need your help to reach as many people as possible. So hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up the problem, which means we have to solve this equation. All right, so if you don't um, understand how to solve linear equations in algebra, what we're talking about here is pre-algebra, algebra one level stuff. So you can check out uh, those courses if you need help um, you know, with algebra. Uh, of course, the links to those will be in the description. One other thing too, if you're not a student and you just maybe want to uh, relearn math or build up your math skills that maybe you once had, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'll teach you basic math, algebra, geometry, and a bunch of other stuff as well. All right, so we have x minus five plus six is equal to three fourths times x plus six. So let's start over here. We have x minus five plus six, so we can just add the negative five and six, and that'll be what negative five plus six is one. So over here, we'll have x plus one. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have to use uh, the distributive property and multiply 3 fourths times x and 6. 
So 3 fourths times x is 3 fourths x, and 3 fourths times 6 is what? Well, this is going to be 6 over 1. So 3 fourths times 6 over 1 is going to be 18 over 4. All right, so hopefully uh, you understand that. And if you don't, well, then, you know, you need to review the distributor property and how to multiply fractions. All right, now what do we need to do? Well, we want to get all of our variables to the left and all of our numbers to the right. But uh, we do have all these fractions over here, so we can kind of just get rid of the fractions in one swoop by multiplying the entire equation by the LCD. Now, you don't have to do this, but this is a great uh, approach. So here we can see that our denominator is 1. So we just have 1, and this is 1. If I put this x over 1, all the denominators we can kind of clearly see. So this is 1, 1, 4, and 4. What is the LCD or the lowest common denominator of all these uh, denominators? Well, it is 4. So when you multiply an equation by the LCD of all the denominators, it will clear the fractions. And, you know, it just kind of makes life a lot easier. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm kind of erasing some things I don't want to erase. All right. So 4 is the LCD of uh, all the denominators here. We're going to multiply 4 times each term in the equation. And the reason why we're doing that is to clear the fraction. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results of doing that. So 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 fourths x is 3x, right? So the 4s cross cancel. We're left with 3x. And 4 times 18 over 4 is 18. The 4s cross cancel. We're left with 18. All right, so now we have a lovely uh, linear equation with no fractions. So now we want to get all of our variables to the left and all of our numbers to the right. So we're going to get that 3x over there, and we'll get our number over here. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to simply subtract these things from both sides. We'll subtract 3x from both sides of the equation here, and then here we'll subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. I'm kind of showing you two steps in, in one. Typically, you're going to want to break this out in their own individual steps, but hopefully you kind of see what I'm doing. And when we add everything down here in a column manner, we're going to get x, 4x minus 3x, that's 1x, is equal to 18 minus 4, which is 14, right? Because the 4s go away here and the 3x's go away over here. All right, so our equation that we just solved, the solution is x is equal to 14. Boy, my voice is kind of fluctuating a bit because it is that time of year where I live where there's a lot of allergies going on. So I, uh, you know, uh, you know, apologize for my crazy sounding voice, but that's not going to stop me because we are in too deep into this problem. All right, so we solved this equation, and the solution is x is equal to 14. All right, so what does that mean? Well, we want to go ahead and reference our table again. So remember, we let x is equal to Lisa's age right now. Okay, so if x is equal to 14, that means that Lisa is 14 years old right now. Okay, so that's fantastic, but what was the actual question of the problem? So let's me go, uh, let me go back all the way over here, uh, and the question is what? How old is Tom right now? How old is Tom right now? So if you're not sure about what the question is asking, go back and review it. So how old is Tom right now? That's what we're trying to figure out. But uh, we have our table, right? So their age is right now. Tom age is right now. It's x minus 5. We know that x is equal to 14. So Tom will be uh, 14 minus 5 years old. All right, so Tom's age right now is x minus 5. x is equal to 14. So x minus 5 is 14 minus 5, which, of course, is 9 or 9 years old. Okay, so this is a very typical type of algebra word problem. And just remember, when you come across problems that involve age and other type of math word problems as well, setting up a table is a great way to organize the information. And if you remember how to do this particular problem, the next time you see an, uh, an age problem, especially in like an algebra course, you'll know exactly how to solve it. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.